Now that we have our training data set ready, in this part, we'll be building and training an image classification model and more specifically, a convolutional neural network for face mask detection. By the way, if you're new to convolutional neural networks and if you want to learn more about it, I have listed down a free course in the video description for you to get up and started. The course is made for beginners and it teaches you all of the concepts needed to build a convolutional neural network. So please go through that if you're new to convolutional neural networks. The architecture of the convolutional neural network we'll be building is as follows. So first we have an input image which is of size 50 by 50 which we pass into a 2D convolution layer. From there, the output of the 2D convolution layer is propagated to the max pooling layer. After that, we have another sequence of a 2D convolution layer followed by a max pooling layer. So the output from this max pooling layer is flattened and passed in to a dense layer which is our fully connected layer. So from the fully connected layer, we pass the output to a dense layer and we also set the dropout in this stage. So the final dense layer is our output layer. In the output layer, we'll have two neurons indicating the binary outputs and we'll be using a softmax activation as our activation function. So before we build and train the model, let us select only the height, width and color depth for our input layer. So here, if I print out the independent variables shape, you see that we have 5749 images with height and width of 50,50 and one color depth. So since we'll be passing in individual images in the network, we'll just need the height and width of the image. So for the input image shape, we can select everything after the first index. So for that, I have written x dot shape and we're slicing from index position one to all of the rest. Now I'm assigning it to a variable input image shape and if we print it out, you can see that our image shape will now be 50 comma 50 comma one. So let's start building our model now. So for this, we'll create a sequential Keras model. That is a sequential model object gets initiated from the Keras library. So here we're doing that and we're assigning this object to the variable model. So I'll run this and we've now created a sequential Keras model. So using this sequential model, we can add all of the layers that we want in our convolutional neural network. As we've discussed earlier, let's create a 2D convolution layer. So here I'm creating a 2D convolution layer using the con2D method with 100 different filters, a filter set of three by three, and we're also keeping bias for each of these filters. Then the input that comes in is our input image shape, and for this layer, we're using the ReLU activation with a stride of two. Also, we're using valid padding. That means we're not padding the input. So this is our convolution layer. And we're adding this layer using the add method off of the sequential model. So with this, we've added a 2D convolution layer to our model. So if I run this, we have it added over here. For your understanding, let us also calculate the number of parameters that we're using in this layer. So the number of parameters is simply calculated by multiplying the filter sizes that is three by three and we have a bias in each filter. So that's plus one. And then we have hundred different filters. So three times three plus one, that's 10 into hundred gives us thousand. So in this layer alone, we have thousand different parameters. Note that the shape of the input image doesn't affect the number of parameters in the convolution layer because this is dictated by what kind of kernel size or filter size that we use, how many filters we use and do we use biases in each of the filters or not. Also, we can calculate the output shape of the 2D convolution layer as well. So remember that we have a height and width. So we're working with two dimensional data. So that's why we have a 2D convolution layer. So the shape of the output is defined by the height and the width. So this is the formula for calculating the output shape for height as well as for the width. So here the input shape of our image is 50 and we're adding two times the number of padding. So in this case, padding is zero and our filter size is of three. Then we're dividing this all by the stride we're taking that is two plus we're adding one over here. So this symbol over here is called flooring. And this means that if we get something like 23.5, it gets flowed down to 23. 
So the output shape is calculated in this way. And since here the image shape is 50 by 50, so both the input shape are same, we get the same output shape for both the height and width. So the output shape of the 2D convolution layer will be 24 by 24 by 100 since we are using 100 different filters. Now let's create a 2D max pooling layer. So over here I'm instantiating a max pooling 2D layer from Keras and I'm passing in the parameter that is the pool size as 2 by 2. And we're adding this layer onto our sequential model as we had done before by using the add method off of the sequential model. So if I run this, the output shape of this layer is 24 divided by 2 into 24 divided by 2 into 100 that is 12 by 12 by 100. Remember that max pooling doesn't have any parameters. So in this case, we're just decreasing the kernel size by the given pool size. The benefit of this max pooling layer is that the shape of the input image array decreases by half, while the values of the most dominant pixels are retained. There are no parameters in this layer since we're only taking the maximum value of the input array when performing max pooling. Now let's again add another 2D convolution layer along with a max pooling layer. And I've also listed down what would be the output shape of these layers. So if you want to do the calculations by yourself, this is a good exercise for you. So here for the conf 2D layer or the 2D convolution layer, we're using 64 different filters of size 3x3. We're keeping the bias as true. So we have one bias for each filter and our activation function is the Rayleigh activation function. So we're adding both of these layers onto our sequential model. And if I run this, the layers are now stacked. Now, if you remember the diagram before, we need to flatten the outputs from this max pooling layer. So if I run this, we've added a flattened layer with the output shape of 5 into 5 into 64. The flattened layer will create a flattened array, which will pass into a fully connected dense layer of 50 neurons. So here I'm using the dense layer from Keras and I'm passing in the number of neurons as 50 and the activation over here is ReLU again. So we're adding this layer on top of our model again. And the number of parameters in this case is calculated by the number of neurons that is 50 times the shape of the input array which is 1600 plus the number of bias. So here by default bias is enabled for each of the neurons. Therefore we have 50 different biases. So once we do all of this calculation, we'll get 80,050 different parameters. And finally, let us add a dropout of 0.2 and a final dense layer, which is our output layer with the activation function as softmax. So here we're adding a dropout and here we're creating a dense layer with the softmax activation. So I'll run this and we have successfully implemented the model architecture we talked about earlier in this part. Let us move on to training the model. So here we're setting an atom optimizer using the atom object and passing in the learning rate as 0.001 and the decay as 0.00001. So this is just a scientific notation of writing those float values. So here we're initializing an atom optimizer with these parameters and we're assigning it to the variable opt. Then Using the compile method from the sequential model, we're configuring the model for training. So our optimizer is set as opt, which is our atom optimizer. The loss is set as categorical cross entropy, because if you remember, we had converted our label encoded dependent variables into a categorical variable. So then we have our metrics for training as accuracy. So we want to be highly accurate. So once this model configuration is set using this line of code, we'll start training the model by calling the fit method off of the sequential model. We'll pass in our independent variable, which is the actual images itself. Then we have our dependent variable for each of these images. We're setting the epochs as 30. So we want to go 30 different passes through the entire set of images that we have. And in each iteration, we're setting the batch size as five. So we're passing five different inputs at a time. Now I'll run all of this and you'll see that the model starts training. So here we're in epoch one of 30 and we're in iteration about 300, 400, 500 for the first epoch. Once this is completed, our model is trained. 
So I'll wait for some time to finish the training and remember that you can set any number of epochs that you want. I'm just setting 30 over here since training for this number of epochs, I found that this gives a fairly average performance for the model that we can actually see. By the way, the values of loss and accuracy over here determine the value of the loss function which is categorical cross entropy and the measure of accuracy. That is how many labels did we correctly classify in the training data set. So in the first epoch, we've classified 73% of the images with the correct label. And you can see that the accuracy increases while the loss decreases as we go from one epoch to another. Great, we now have a trained image classification model ready. In the next part, we'll make a prediction using this trained model on an out of training sample image. So I hope you'll stick around for that.